Now we're ready to take care of our side effects. And when we are loading a list of products, we want to turn the spinner on. We already have a file created for this. This is our global spinner file. So all we need to do is add our actions to this global spinner effect. And that's all we'll do. And then also we want to make sure we hide the spinner when we're done doing whatever, like for example, loading the products or if there was an error. And then the second side effect we want to set up is our alert. So if we're unable to load a product, we want to give a alert for that. And also we're doing the exact same thing inside the product list as well. We want to turn the spinners on and off and also give an alert if there's any errors. If we go back to the home page, so right now when we refresh it, there's no spinner and that's what we'll take care of. The spinner effect file is already created. We created that in the last module and that is inside of our global store, our global effects file. And it's the last one right here, the spinner effect. All we're going to do here is add a couple more actions to these up types. So when we're successful at loading a list of the products, the spinner will turn on. And we want to make sure we bring in the products actions that we're listening for. So whenever we want access to our product actions, we'll call on this. So let's start on this one right here. So we want to turn the spinner on when we're loading a list of products. So from product actions and load products, that one. And then also the load admin products as well. And that's going to be load admin products. And that should turn our spinner on. Now we want to make sure we turn our spinner off. So when we're successful at loading our products, or if there's a failure, we'll turn the spinner off. So that's going to be load products failure and also load product success. And success, that one right there. So that will turn the spinner off. And that's what's really great about this. We could stack as many actions as we want inside of this of type, and they will all do the exact same thing. They would turn the spinner off, turn the spinner on. So our spinner should be working. Let's save this and check this out in the browser. So let's navigate to one of our pages and our spinner should turn on. Okay, so this one's working for the load or the product list component. And then if we go back to the shopping page, our spinner turns on here as well. Great. So let's trigger an error and get our side effect, our alert side effect working whenever there's a error for loading a list of products. Let's start inside of our global alert effect file and that is this file right here. So the first thing we'll do is we'll bring in our actions like we did inside the spinner file. So now we'll have access to our product actions. Then towards the bottom here, I'll create a brand new effect and this is gonna be for giving us back an error message whenever we have problems with loading a list of products. And I called it unable to load products and we're using the create effect method and we're listening for the load products failure. So if there's any failures, give us back this message. And I said this in a prior module, but you wanna remove this if you're dealing with real APIs. I'm just doing this, adding a two second delay so we could actually see the spinner. Now let's trigger an error so we can actually see this effect working. And to do that, we'll go inside of the products component TS file. And to trigger an error, I'll just replace this temporarily. And I'll comment this out and just add in a string like test or something like that. That should give us back an error. And I'll do the exact same thing inside of the other file. So we'll go inside the product list. So we can test this as well. And I'll change this to test. That should give us an error for both of these pages. This page automatically refreshed, so if I refresh it again, we should be getting an error. And there it is, great. Now let's test the other page and we'll go to the admin products page. Test this as well, so we should be getting error for that. So our side effect for our error is working. We can go ahead and remove this error now and add this back in. And also while we're here, let's remove this comment out section. We don't need that anymore now that we took care of our side effects. And also we can remove a lot of the services we're no longer using. So all of our side effects are being handled now. So we don't need the spinner, the alert service, all of this. We could remove all of this and just leave in the pagination service. We still need that and the store. And now our view model is taking care of the pagination and the products. So we can remove this. And this user here, I accidentally left this in here. I refactored this before I did the tutorials. And I accidentally left the user in here. 
So I'll just go ahead and remove that. And we'll go up here, remove all of this. Don't need all of this anymore. And this pagination interface, we don't need that. And this is what you want your products component TS file to look like. Now let's jump into the product list file. And we'll remove this as well. And recomment this back in. And then we can get rid of this section right here. And leave in this current URL. And then we're going to leave in the alert service and the product service. We still need this for now. In later videos, we'll be removing that though. And then if we go back up here, so we'll only remove this spinner for now. And then we don't need the products or pagination anymore. Our view model is taking care of that. So we can remove this. And then clean it up up here. So we'll remove it up here as well. And we'll check it out in the browser one more time. Make sure everything is still working. Nothing looks broken so far. And if we go into the admin section, the products, our spinner is working. Everything is still working. Our pagination is still working. And if we jump back to the shopping page, that is looking good. And then we'll just take a peek inside the console. We shouldn't be getting any unexpected errors in here. We're not. So everything is working great. So what if we want to add some sorting to this page, for example? Let's say you want to organize everything by alphabetical order on this page. Well, they give you a way to do that, and we'll do that in the next video.